how are you developers i hope you are fine today we'll be learning about css so welcome to the world of css in today's digital digital age where the internet plays a significant role in our lives understanding how to style a web page is a valuable skill css which stands for cascading style sheet is a fundamental technology used to control the presentation of the web content. CSS is a style sheet language that describes the look and formatting of a document written in markup language like HTML. It enables web developers to separate the structure of a web page from its presentation, making it easier to manage and maintain large websites. Before CSS, styling web pages was done directly within HTML using attributes like font, color. However, this leads to messy and hard to maintain code. CSS provides a more efficient and flexible way to style web pages by allowing developers to define styles in a separate file and apply them consistently across multiple pages. So, now that we know what is CSS, let us now dive in and see how we write CSS code. If you have been following the course, you are aware of the repository that we forked, which contains essential resources for this course. To access today's notes, just log into a GitHub account, go to the repository that you forked. If you are behind, click on the sync fork button, then click on the update branch and your branch will be up to date. Then open your favorite editor, mine is Visual Studio Code, and navigate to the clone repository. After that, open the terminal and use the git pull command to pull the changes to your local machine. This, en this ensures that you have the latest notes for the cause. So now let us start learning about CSS. When you pull the changes, you'll notice that there's a new folder called CSS that has been added. This HTML is the previous folder for last week's class. So in this CSS folder, if you click on it, you'll see there are two more folders. One is intro, another one is selectors. So this 01 intro is the content that we'll learn on day one, that is today. This 02 selectors is the content to learn on day two. And the folders will be named according to the num to the day that they'll be they'll be taught. So today we'll be learning about introduction to CSS. So I'll open this intro. Then inside the intro we'll find a, a readme file. I'll click on that readme file. And this file contains the notes for today's class. So without much ado, let's dive in. First I'll just open my notes using my Markdown Previewer like that. Then I'll close this one. Then I'll also create a new file, I'll call it index.html Because you have said that CSS is used to style HTML or any document And in this case we'll learn how to style the, the HTML document that we created last week So I'll just split my screen and put the notes on the left And the HTML code on the right, like that So here we'll start learning CSS we have already said that CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets and CSS is the language we use to style our HTML document and you can, you, you, can, you can use CSS to define styles for your web pages and today we'll see how we can introduce styles to our pages So there are three ways to insert a style sheet The first way is to use the inline CSS and let us see how the inline CSS is used in action So first I'll just create my HTML boilerplate as usual Then I'll rename the docu the title to Intro to CSS Like that Then inside the body I can Put a paragraph there Then I can say this is a paragraph Like that And I'll save my code So I've said now I want to sell this paragraph And I've said the first way and you have said that to if you want to style your HTML document, use CSS. So the first way of using of inserting CSS into your document is by using inline styles. And these inline styles use the style attribute. To, to insert inline styles to an element, use the style attribute. And we already talked about the style attribute in some previous classes, but I'll just repeat. So to use the style attribute. You put, you have said that any attribute is put in the opening tag of the element So I'll just put my attribute here, style And I'll say maybe color 
Then I put the color of the style. I say color blue. Then that. So I save my code and let us go to the browser and see how this, this happens. So if you go to the browser, you'll see that our paragraph is blue in color. Here's the paragraph, it's blue in color. And that way we have styled our paragraph using inline CSS styles. And you have said to apply inline CSS styles, use the style attribute. And this is just a recap because we already did this in the last week class when learning about HTML. But that is the first way of inserting CSS in your document. So now let's look at the second way. Another way of inserting a style into the HTML document is using internal CSS. The first one is using inline CSS, now the second one is using internal CSS. And when you use internal CSS, we make use of the style element. And we already talked about the style element and learning about HTML. We saw that the style element is put in the head tag. This head tag here. Before the body, there's a head tag. So in the head tag is where you put your style document, your style element. And the style element, inside there, you can define your CSS styles. So I'll just create a, let's say, H1. H1 there. And I'll say intro to CSS, like that. So if I want to style this H1, you can just say here, H1. Then I will say, actually, is, let us say, maybe the background color of that H1. Should be aqua, like that. And that is how you, you apply internal CSS. That's how you apply CSS internally. And also, if you can remember, we talked about the the IDs and the classes. So I'll just wrap all this into a div. This is just a recap. We did this on learning about HTML. So I'll, I'll list all the elements in the div. And we say that a div is just a container. So you can give this div a class. So let's say class container. And you can sell that div anyhow, any style that you want. We said that to sell a class, use the dot, then name of that class, the dot container. Then inside there, you put the, the styles that you want. So let me just change this H1 to have a, just a color of red. Then I just apply the background color to both the, the H1 and the P. I'll just apply the background color to their container. That. I'll just use this color here called blurry. This color. So you have seen that we have applied styles to the elements, but we have not applied them inside the elements. We have not applied them in line. We have applied them in the head, but still in the document. That's why we are saying it's internal. In line means in the same line, like how what we did to the paragraph here. In the same line is where you define your, your styles. But internal means in the same document. Not in this. Now you have, you have styled this div, but not in this line. You have styled it upside here but it is still the same document that's why it says it is it's called internal so let us save it and see it in the browser so if you go to the browser you can see now our h1 is here and it has a color of of red our paragraph still has a color of blue but you applied this paragraph using the inline styles this uh, this the color of the h1 we applied it using the internal styles and then we, we surrounded these two elements inside the div and so that the div is just a container then you style that container to have a background color of blurry wood. And that is how you style your HTML using internal styles or internal CSS. So now let us look at the, the next way to insert CSS in our document. And that is using an external style sheet or external CSS. For you to style your web page using an external CSS, the first thing you have to create that external file. So I'll just come here to my explorer and inside the intro dot, inside the intro I'll just right click and say new file. Then there I'll call my style, my style sheet styles dot CSS. You can just call it any name, but it must have the 
CSS extension to, so, to show that it is, a, it is a CSS file. I think that is clear. So I'll just call mine styles.css. And inside here, inside the styles, you can just write your CSS styles. But before you write your CSS styles, you have to link this, CSS, this style sheet of yours to your HTML document. And you do so using the link using the link element like this so you can see the link element here is the link element the link element is a self-closing element or it's a void element that means it does not have a closing tag also the link element has two important attributes the first attribute is the href attribute and we talked about the href attribute in some previous classes and we said that the href attribute provides the path to your to your file when talking about links in html the anchor link to be specific it had a it also had this href attribute and here you, you are supposed to put the the path to your to your file or the path to you want to take you want the link to take you to so in this case you put the path to your css file so i'll just put dot slash dot slash mean in the current directory is where i have a my style sheet so i'll say dot slash then the name of the style sheet is styles not style but styles dot css like that then notice there's this rel attribute this rel or in in full relationship shows the relationship of the linked resource and your html document so how does your resource relate to this HTML document? So I said the relationship is that the link document is just a, a style sheet. That's why I write here rel style sheet. So that is how you connect the external CSS file to your HTML document. So if you save this code, you can just save it and inside inside this CSS you can just put the the styles that you want. I'll just put some new styles here and just say let me just get another another container or let's say another paragraph and say new paragraph then i can use let's say let us use an id say here it has an id of of new then now i can use this id to style this paragraph so i'll just select to say that to select an id use the hash the hash symbol then i'll say new then inside there i can put the styles that that i want i can put any cell that i want inside here so let's say i'll just change the color because you don't know about many properties of of, of css yet so i'll just say the color to be green so let's save this file and look it in the in the browser so if you go to the browser you can see that our paragraph is here this is the new paragraph that we added and it has a color of green and you know you'll notice that this color we didn't apply it inline or internal we applied it in the external style sheet that we created so that is how you use an external style sheet to apply styles to your document now that we have learned about linking an external style sheet to our html document let us learn about the css syntax so in css for you to define any styles in css notice that we don't use any style element or anything of html here in the styles in the in your, in your css style sheet you don't use any html code just use purely css code so you can see the syntax of css the first thing for you to define a, a style you need the selector this selector points to the html element you want to style here i used an id selector we learn, we learn about selectors we learn more about selectors in tomorrow's class but in this class you say you know that this is a, here is a, is a selector and this one here is a declaration and each declaration has a property this this one this color is the property and then this green is the is the value and you notice that after the 
declaration I put a semicolon. So semicolons are used to separate if you have more than one properties in one style. For example, I can say that is the color that you can, you can also have the maybe say font size. Say font size maybe 30 pixels. So for me to separate these two styles, I have to put a semicolon after each declaration. If I remove this, semi this semicolon, you can see it is, it is an error. You can see there's this red line here, indicating that there's an error. And the error is that, you can see if I hover here, it will say semicolon expected. So this is the error that I should just put semicolon there. That is called a syntax error. You should even write code that it's supposed to be written. If you don't follow the rules, you will experience syntax error. And that is why you're learning about the syntax of writing HTML code for us not to get the syntax errors. So this is how you write your CSS code. And also if you want to declare a new a new declare a new declaration or a new selection. I'll just declare a new block here. Let's say I'll say maybe any selector that you want. We'll learn about selectors tomorrow. I can say this is a selector. Then I'll have to put this. Now this curly braces are used to they're just delimiters of saying my selector starts here and ends here. So this is one block. This is another block. So for you to define another another declaration block, you have to put the selector there, then put this opening curly brace, then write your CSS code here, then end the closing curly brace. And that is how you write CSS. But as we move on, we'll write more code and we'll be used to this syntax. The next thing that we learn today is comments in CSS. We already said that to write comments are used to either ignore part of our code or document our code. So in CSS for you to comment, use the forward slash and the, and the star like this. You put this forward slash, star, write your comment, then at the end put the star, then the forward slash. And that is how you comment in, in CSS. So if I comment this code, this code will be ignored. And also to we said that to comment, you can use comments to add additional information. Like here I can say learning CSS. And these things in the comments will not be will be ignored by the browser and will not, will not affect our code. So that is how you use comments in, in CSS. So the final thing that we learn is the CSS or the cascading order. So far. We have learned three ways of how to add CSS in our in our document. The first way was the internal styles, the other way was the external and the internal styles. So you can ask yourself, what if you put the same styles, you put the same styles in internal, in external and in inline? What will happen? For example, I put conflicting styles like this. You can see here in the in the paragraph, I put the style to have a, I put the inline style there and set the color to be blue. Then let's say in the internal, I put the same paragraph. Then I say the color should be yellow. Then in the external style sheet, I put another paragraph there. It's the same paragraph that you are referencing. Then I say the color should be. Let's say violet, like that. So you can ask yourself, what will be the color of that paragraph? Because you have applied different styles to the same element. You're talking about this paragraph, assuming that let us delete this other paragraph so that you can have only one paragraph in our page. Let's just comment this paragraph here to ignore it. So let us say you have one paragraph in our document and you have styled that same paragraph in three different ways. What will be the which which style will be applied? So that is what we are talking about in this class when you say the cascading order. You can see here what style will be used when there is more than one style specified for an HTML element. That is the question. That is the concept that you have looked at it. And the answer is that when you when you write different styles, the three ways that I've said you can add styles. When you write them and you run your code, all the styles will be cascaded into a virtual style. In short, it will be combined into one 
big style sheets all the rules the internal the internal the inline and the external will all be combined into a virtual style sheet and there will be a priority of those styles so the one that has the highest priority is the inline style has the highest priority in all the amongst all the three styles that you have looked at them one of the highest priority will be the inline style then the next in priority will be the internal style this internal this one you said this one is going to call it internal then the one that has least priority is this external style sheet so if you put the same element different in different styles then that will be displayed in a browser will be this one this one color blue because as we said that is which has the highest priority and it will override all the other styles and also the browser default the browser default is when you don't provide any style that is the browser's default and by default the color of the paragraph is black so if you define any other color it will be overrided and that is the cascading order that you're talking about so you can just go to the browser and confirm that our paragraph will be blue you can see it is blue the same paragraph will define the color to be yellow and also in the external style sheet will define the same paragraph to be have to have a color of blue violet so let's go to the browser and confirm that the inline style is the one that has the highest priority so if you go to the browser you can see our paragraph is still blue in in color because you have said that the inline one is the one that has the highest priority amongst the all the all types of applying styles in our style sheet in our html document so let's look at the if are the external and the internal which one has high priority in in practice for us to see the difference in priority among the internal and the external style sheet i'll just remove this style here i'll remove this inline style just remove it so we'll be selling this paragraph using the internal style sheet here this internal styles then that will be used and the same paragraph is being styled with this external style sheet here so you're trying to to see which one has the highest priority among this external style sheet and the internal styles among all of the three you have said that the internal one the inline one is which has the highest priority now i have, I have removed the inline one for us to compare the internal and the external so let us save our code and see it in the browser if you go to the browser you'll see that our paragraph is now yellow in color and it is yellow because we defined yellow in the internal style the external style sheet was defining a blue violet color but you have said that the internal style has a higher priority than the external style sheet so the internal styles is, is it is that will be applied to our to our document and that is the difference between the priority of the different levels so if you define a, a style and they are conflicting the one that has the highest priority is the one that will be displayed so that is it for today guys see you in the next class that is tomorrow so peace out